Hi there, welcome back to the YouTube channel. I'm back again, and yet again, we've got another Mono Commander this week, so I'm sorry if you're bored of Mono Commanders, but I was requested to do this by one of the regulars on my stream. And it is Dio Chan, Artful Beauty, three in a red for a 1 1 human advisor, and it has tap, destroy target creature of your choice, then destroy target creature of an opponent's choice. Activate this ability only during your turn before attackers are declared. So you have to activate Dio Chan in your first main step, basically, for this to work at all. Yeah, this is old school. This is from um, Portal Three Kingdoms. It was one of the very first. It was a set for those of you who don't know anything about Three Kingdoms. It was set on a lot of, if I've got it right, Chinese Far East um, philosophies and creatures and so on and so forth. Featured that wonderful ability, Horsemanship, that I don't think ever has been used ever again anywhere. Um, but Dio Chan. Um, Dio Chan, I hope I'm saying it right, sorry, Dio Chan, it's how I've been told it should be pronounced, um, is one of those cards that no one really plays in Commander, and so it's a bit of a challenge for me to put this together, but this is what I've come up with. Um, I can't remember which who asked for it, but I hope whoever it was you enjoyed this one, so here we go. So, at the beginning, um, yeah, ramp. Playing a mono red deck, I've got to have Dockside here then is a bit of fun. So we've got Humble Defector, because I think card draw could be important in this deck, and yes, we can give it to an opponent, but what we can do is go, right, draw two cards, we're not gonna let you have any benefit from it, because then we're gonna destroy it with Diochan. Um, yes, we'll probably lose Diochan at the same time, but oh well, it is what it is. Um, Briggy, God of Storytelling, makes an appearance as well, so we get some extra mana, or we can discard a card and exile the top two if we need to, if we're not getting anything good. Magus of the Wheel makes an appearance. I decided to have some fun with this deck, as I said. So, um, sacrifice this. Did everyone discards a hand draw seven? Stark Wrath. Um, destroyed target artifact or creature. That permanence control gains control of Stark Wrath permanently. So, again, take out something you don't like. They use no chance to then destroy Stark if you want to, or risk them keeping it. Um, Anger gives everything haste, what we control. Hatushi, the Blazing Sky, is here for the treasure ability when it dies. Ember Wild Captain, because, you know, I do have a little bit of thing about being a monarch. I am British after all. I would like to be a monarch. No. Um, I just like being the monarch in Commander. That's it. We're not going to go down to my other fantasy land. Um, but whenever it takes while you're the monarch, Ember Wild Captain deals damage to that player equal to the number of cards in their hand. So keeping the monarchy is important. Oja Axnil, Deepest Might, makes an appearance. Red source would deal damage to an apparent non-combat damage less than the power of Oja Tire. That source is equal deals damage equal to four. So anything under four you get to do four. Um, and then yeah, the land can be transformed back if we need to. Mono red bone horde dragon saw dracosaurs here. Have to keep that going. And then we have a little bit of more fun. Creepy Doll deals combat damage to a creature, flip a coin. If you win the flip, destroy the creature. Indestructible as well, so I'm just going to put a minus one, minus one counter on it, or exile it to get rid of it. Gold span for extra treasures. Castle, Tyrant of the Cliffs. Now, I did a whole deck on Castle many about a year ago now. Um, Castle, people seem to forget about the fact that they have to pay the three mana, otherwise you get a three, three blocker. It's amazing how many people forget about it. It really is. Kiki Jiki's here, just to give us an extra copy of a creature we control. Um, yeah. Goldspan Dragon, Dracosaur, Springs Mine, Ever World Captain, if we need to make sure with the Monarch. Um, and then we have the other doll, Stuffy Dolls here as well. Tap, deal one damage to itself, then it deals damage, it deals that much damage to a chosen player. People don't tend to attack you with big things without trample when Stuffy Dolls in play. It's quite useful from that point of view. Erlobras, the Hiddens here, to give everything haste again and make sure all our opponent's creatures enter tapped. Zealous Conscript, so we can nick one of the creatures that may be tapped and attack with it, get our benefit from it before someone else does. You will always get three cards with Combustible Gear Hog. I think the only one time that hasn't happened is when one of my opponents is on 100 life. So, yeah, it does happen. Um, Atali, the Primal Storm, makes an appearance as well, just to give us some extra cards we can get into play. Godo, Bandit Warlord. You're probably wondering why it's here, but if you know anything about Godo, you can guess what's coming up in the artifact section. Inferno Titan to do some, well, shared out lightning bolt damage when it enters play. Inferno of Star Mounts, can't be counted, has haste, goes in and gets in really tough and hard. Rushi the Falling Star gives us a way to deal with the board if, when it gets killed off. Worm Coil Engine, um, I have seen a trick where people kill the Worm Coil Engine with Diochan to get the two 
tokens that they need for some reason. Don't know why you do that, but it does happen. And then Skyline Despot, another way of becoming the Monarch, and at the beginning of our upkeep, if we're the Monarch, we get a dragon. Nice. A few Planeswalkers to support Diachan from my point of view. Chandra, Torch of Defiance to give us the mana, um, because Diachan's quite fragile and easy to kill off, so we are probably going to be casting it a fair few times. Koth of the Hammer, again. Um, extra mana if we need it, or we can make a mana uh, mountain into a 4-4 elemental to, for a turn to attack. Um, Koth of Fire Resistance does go and find us the land and such as some land out, so it's usually pay for mana. Plus two, get a mountain, put it in our hands, we're ready to go for five mana next turn. And Chandra, Awakened Inferno, just to give everyone an emblem that deals damage to them. Yeah, you become unpopular with it, I know, but that's the way it goes. Right, Wheel of Fate, spells wise, not too many. Wheel of Fate does the whole discard and draw seven. Um, Earthquake to control the board a bit. Vandal Blast to eventually wipe the board of all the artifacts that are annoying us. Chaos Warp gives us a chance of getting rid of something big and gribbly and hoping that we get anything big and gribbly in response. Jessica's Will is also in because, you know, extra mana, exiling the cards, you should be able to cast this when Day of Chan's in play. Um, Wheel of Fortune is here, so if you're building this in real life, unless you own a Wheel of Fortune, take this out for something cheaper in. Chain Reaction, control the board, Fiery Confluence to do a little bit of damage to each creature's or two damage to opponents, I mean, yeah. Four mana, potentially six damage to each opponent can help you win the game quite happily. Mana Geyser gives us a whole load of mana, and then to finish it off, well, Blasphemous Axe here, but to finish the spell section off, two fun cards from my point of view Insurrection, untap all creatures, gain control of them, they get haste until the end of turn, and then for some serious fun with some of the mana we might be getting, Warp World is here because mm, I just love Warp World, I haven't played it for a while, so we went in this deck. Artifact wise, we do have quite a few, you know, Godo gave it away a little bit. We do have quite a few bits of equipment in here, some of which are here to protect Dio Shan a little bit. So, Jeweled Lotus to help her get out early. The boots are here to help protect her. And then we've got Soul Ring, Arcane Signet for a ramp along with Fire Diamond. Illusionist Bracers really do want to go on Dio Chan. Um, we can activate the ability and then copy it, if I remember correctly. Lightning Greaves is even better protection for Dear Chan if we need him. Ruby Medallion for the ramp. More protection with Swift Foot Boots. More ramp with Thought Vessel. And then some equipment. Battle Mage's Bracers. Um, again, tap it, pay an extra one, get to do it twice. Dark Steel Plate makes Dear Chan indestructible, which is lovely because that means even if they do decide to try and destroy her, they can't. Mithril Coat does the same thing and it comes into play and it attaches instantly with having to pay the equip cost, which I really do like. Fire and Ice gives us protection from red. Sword of Truth and Justice gives us protection from blue and white. Um, deals combat damage to a creature you control, then proliferate. So, yeah, it's worse, but it works with Godo. Thousand Year Alexa um, lets us play the ability of Dio Chan as soon as we can. And then we can technically, before the first ability resolves, pay one, untap Dio Chan, do it again, and then see what happens from there. Nyx Lotus for some more ramp, Thran Dynamo for more ramp, Gilded Lotus for more ramp, and like I said, I've said in yesterday's video, Mono Deck, so Throne of Eldraine's here as well. A few enchantments, only three of them. Curse of Opulence, so we get some um, treasure, well, gold artifact tokens, not treasure tokens, so they're gold artifacts at this time. Um, basically the same thing as a treasure token if you want to be that way, but if you're playing a token deck, it does have its upsides. Um, Curse of the Stalk Prey, whenever a creature deals combat damage to an enchanted player, put a plus one, plus one counter on it. I would recommend getting this and put it on the biggest threat on the board so all of your, you know, she makes some allies um, who will then attack your opponent because with their the threat, their creatures are getting bigger. So, yeah, it works. Sunbird's Invocation just lets us play things for free and is a bit of fun from my point of view. Again, another card you can replace if you don't want it in. And then we just have a whole load of lands that go and fetch us our mountains, Nykthos to give us that wonderful boost for red mana, and because we are playing 22 mountains it seemed pointless not to play Valak at the Molten Pinnacle, to have a bit of a backup win condition if we need it. Um, I will point out we've got the Crucible of Defiance as well, just to give some tokens. The chance are you'll channel this away at some stage to get a couple of 1-1s that you may need. And that's it. 
it does seem weird that I'm covering a card from Portal 3 Kingdoms. I know it's quite expensive to pick this one up in real life. I know MTGO it's not too sad at all to grab one if you want to try the deck out. But in real life I know this is one of the more expensive Portal 3 Kingdoms ones. But it's just fun and it does bring back some memories for me. So I'm glad the person from the stream suggested I have a look at this card and build a deck around it for them. Um, so that's it for today. 570 of you have subscribed so far. Hit the subscribe button if you can, I'd really appreciate it. Yeah. Um, see how close we can get to the next magic number for YouTube value um, by the end of the year before I really start thinking about what we're going to do in the new year. Um, but for now, thanks for watching. If there is a card you would like to see that I haven't covered on the YouTube channel, we were up to, with this video, we're up to about 610 videos on the YouTube channel at the moment. Um, but if there's something I haven't covered you want me to have a look at, please leave me a comment down below. Duskmorn, I'll drop in the, old, the more Duskmorn video over the next couple of weeks until the set's fully released. So, yeah, do need some things to talk about next week. So, if you've got anything you want to see covered, let me know down below. If it's not one I've done, I'll try and get it done for you next week. Tomorrow is a fun deck that I've been meaning to for ages. And this is purely self indulgent tomorrow. So, I hope you enjoy it. It's a little bit weird. Um, but for now, thanks for watching. Hope you like this one. I'll be back tomorrow with another video. Take care. Bye.